Hello. I'm Sally, your host. Welcome to the third board, my master's chess channel. In this video, I will show you the conclusion of the game played between the American Grand Master, Robert Fischer, and the Hungarian Grand Master, Lajos Portis, in 1966 Havana. If you have not watched part 1, I strongly recommend you watch it first. Just click the link above. So, let's continue the game. As we watched in the last video, in this position, Fisher had white and played. Knight to a7. Blocking the rook and threatening the b5 pawn. Black main candidate moves here are. Bishop to c4, defending the pawn with the bishop. Rook to b8, defending the pawn with the rook. And king to f7, giving up the pawn. Stockfish considers only two of them best moves. The other is an inaccuracy. Did you find these two moves? One best move is bishop to c4. The game would continue like this. Rook to d4. In this position, playing rook from d to b1, trying to take the b5 pawn would be another inferior move this time for white. The game could continue like this. King to f7. Knight takes on b5. Rook from h to b8. Knight takes on c7. Rook takes on a2. h3. f3. g4 and white would be slightly better. Let's return to the variation. After rook to d4, black could play. Rook to d8. Rook takes on d8 check. King takes on d8. Rook to d1 check. King to e8. Knight to c6. Threatening check with rook to d8, and after that rook to, to d7. Bishop takes on a2. Taking the a2 pawn, but later losing the c7 pawn. h4. Threatening to expel the rook defender. h5. If instead of h5, black plays knight takes pawn, he would lose the rook. Rook to d8 check. King to f7, forced. Rook to d7 check. King to e6. Rook takes on c7. Knight takes on h4. Knight to d4 check. King to e5. Rook takes on g7 and white would be slightly better. After white's knight to a7, the other best move for black is, king to f7. The game could continue like this. Knight takes on b5. Rook from h, to c8. Defending c7. Pawn to a4. Knight to e5. Knight to a7. Rook from c, to b8. Bishop to d4. Knight to c4. And although black is a pawn behind, white's positional advantage would be small. In the game, after knight to a7, Portish played rook to b8, which is an inaccuracy according to the wise fish, but does not necessarily lose the game. The problem is, 
Portish's opponent was Fisher, and the American in his prime, almost always played perfectly. Let's return to the game. After rook to b8, Fisher continues with rook from d, to b1, pinning the b5 pawn and threatening to take it. King to f7, connecting rooks and giving up the pawn. If instead of king to f7, black had moved his bishop to c4, white would have played pawn to a4, and the b5 pawn would be lost anyway. Back to the game. Knight takes on b5. Rook from h, to d8. Rook to b4. Giving the a2 pawn in exchange for the c7 pawn. However, for stockfish, pawn to a4 was the best move. Back to the game. Bishop takes on a2. The bishop, of course cannot be taken because there is a mate threat with rook to d1. Knight takes on c7. Rook from b to c8. Threatening the knight. h4. Freeing space for the white king. It also threatens to push the pawn to h5, expelling the knight, and winning the f4 pawn. If Portish takes the knight now, he would lose the exchange with the following. Bishop to b6. Rook takes on c3. And bishop takes rook. Let's return to the game. After pawn to h4. Portish plays. Rook to d2. Defending the bishop. Portish probably wished to avoid the white rook going to the 7th rank. Bishop to b6. Defending the knight. f3. This move was an inaccuracy. Instead of pawn to f3, it was better to play pawn to h5. After that, the game could have continued with Rook to a4 Bishop to b3 Rook to a7 King to g8 Rook from a1 to a5 And, according to Stockfish, black would still be worse, but better than in the game. Let's return to the game. After f3, Fisher plays. Bishop to e3. It would be an inferior move to take the pawn. In this case, the game could have continued like this. King to g8. h5. Knight to e7. Bishop to e3. Rook to d7. Rook takes on a2. Rook from d takes on c7. And white would be slightly better. Let's return to the game. After bishop to e3, Portish continues with. Rook to e2. Rook to d7 was better. Knight to b5. Rook to a8 h5. Expelling the knight in order to move the rook to f4. Knight to e5. Rook to f4 check. King to e7. This was another weak move. Retreating the king to g8 was better. But even if black had retreated his king, white would still have advantage. For example, Knight to d4. Attacking the rook and the f3 pawn. Rook to b2. Knight takes on f3. Knight takes on f3 check. Rook takes on f3. Rook to a5. h6. Rook to b1 check. Rook takes rook. Bishop takes rook.
Pawn takes pawn. King takes pawn. And white would be better. Let's return to the game. After king to e7, the black king will be too much exposed in the center. Fisher continues with Rook to d1 Rook to c8 Black's king position is so fragile that, instead of rook to c8, Stockfish suggests for black, rook takes bishop, sacrificing the exchange. Rook to e4 King to f6 Rook to d6 check King to f5 Trying to save the knight Retreating the king to f7, and giving up the knight was better, but the position is already lost for black. Rook to f4 check King to g5, forced Rook takes on f3, discovered check After this move, the game could have continued with Rook takes bishop Rook takes rook Knight to g4 Rook to e7 King to h5 f3 Knight to h6 Rook takes on g7 Bishop to b1 g4 check But, because it was already hopeless In this position, after rook takes on f3 check Lajos Portish Resigned Did you like this game? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want notifications of more content like this, please subscribe to this channel. And if you want to make a request regarding some game from the past, leave a comment below. If the game has sufficient research material, my master may consider your request. We wish you good luck in your chess. Thank you, and see you again. Goodbye.